Welcome to From Page to Screen on the Batman Book Club YouTube. I am your host, Ryan Lauer, and with me is my Ninja Turtle brother, Garrett Grev. Hello, Garrett. Hi, here I am. I'm a Ninja Turtle brother. Here you are. I appreciate that. I appreciate you coming on to do this. This is only the second one. Um, you're following Big Shoes of uh, Paul Herman for the From Page to Screen, which was, I mean, it was like eight months ago. Oh, I boy. thought I'd get one out um, sooner than that, but here we go. And uh, yeah, so no pressure. Um, Jeez, Paul will wow. be Paul will be watching and listening. So critiquing. yeah, and he already doesn't like my opinions on most things. Yeah. I'm sure he's going to be going. He's like, see that guy doesn't know turtles, and he doesn't know yeah. Reed Richards, John <laughs> Krasinski. That gets all worked up. I hope John Krasinski is in the next Ninja Turtles movie. I hope he um, plays Reed Richards in a Ninja Turtles movie <laughs> yeah. where they go through the multiverse and then the Reed about. Richards in their multiverse is, the, is is still John Krasinski. That's what I want. Just for Paul. I, yeah, this is just for Paul. I hope so. So as the title you can see uh, talking tonight, the Batman versus the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Garrett is sporting a Batman t-shirt. I'm representing the Ninja Boom. Turtles. So we're we didn't in plan this people. <laughs> this is just Midwest brain. We, yeah, Midwest brain always every day. So I want to compare like I did before, um, kind of compare the the movie to the source material in which this case was Batman Ninja Turtles, Batman mm -hmm. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I have the deluxe edition because I'm fancy. But first off, and like just really quick, Garrett, like what are your overall thoughts on the movie? What do you think about the movie? Oh, gosh, I think there's. I'll be honest. I think I think you could refer to this as a mixed bag, but that carries a lot more negative connotations than I'd ever oh. want to imply. Okay. I think it's very, very good. I think there's some aspects of it that I'm like, hmm, that was a choice that I probably wouldn't make. You know, wouldn't make. And then the producers and the writers and the directors of the movie are like, well, Garrett, are you not like <laughs> very squarely not in, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the business of making entertainment for the masses? And I'd say, good point uh you know withdrawn maybe but i i really enjoy it i enjoyed it when it came out my boys wanted to watch it i did not let them watch it for reasons mm -hmm. we'll probably get into yeah. um i've watched it a couple times recently as we've been trying to figure out dates and then i'm like hey i've got another opportunity if we had to postpone this or whatever i can just watch it again and man it's great it's really fun to see batman and the ninja turtles on my tv screen right yeah. like doing ninja stuff fighting ninjas together is like it's like when i was a kid and i had like probably batman returns kenner action figures and ninja turtle playmate action figures those mm -hmm. bad boys would get played together all you know i was just like i was i was crossing continuities i was in and out of different universes they were just my action figures it's like that only you know i'm a full-grown man and mm -hmm. still enjoying it it was something that i never expected to happen like sure. you said i'm playing on your on your uh bedroom floor with mixing up the multiverse of all multiverse battle uh ninja turtles and batman were always in cahoots they were they were right. never fighting each other they were always allies to me so to finally see a movie so i was over the moon enough when the comic book was announced uh but then when the announcement came that the movie was coming uh, right i lost my shit yeah. Um, it's so, right squarely pointed at Ryan Lauer. Yeah, pretty much. Um, it actually came out in 2019, uh, directed by Jake Castorena, which he's involved in a lot of the art department of like DC stuff, but he's actually directed um, Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, the, the TV series. He's directed some episodes. He's done the death and return of Superman. He has directed some Justice League action episodes, some Batman Unlimited episodes, and he did another great um, team up movie, Scooby Doo and Batman: The Brave and the Bold. I was going to so say the guy he did is Brave and the Bold, right? He's I very did not. I didn't realize he did stuff. Death and Return of Superman. That's yeah, that's that? rad. Written by my friend Tim Sheridan, <laughs> uh, but also he did a lot of art department for. I'm looking at his list right now of. You know, he's a storyboard artist in Rise of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Wonder Woman, Bloodlines, Batman Hush, Justice League vs. Fate of Five, Batman Gotham by Gaslight, Batman the Killing Joke. Like, he he sounds like my kind of guy. Yeah. I, I want to really get to know Jake. Yeah. Uh, but it was released in 2019. 
I was all set up to be on the BOF podcast that was reviewing this and about, oh, I don't know, 10 seconds before we hit record power in my power building outage. went out. Yes. Yes. And it never came back. Mm, and so I always like to say that was that I was the Anthony Anderson gif of crying on a couch because <laughs> I had no power all night and knew I was not going to get to talk about this. So, yeah. but that's okay. Cause I'm here talking about with Garrett now. And I, I love the movie. I adore the movie. Um, you not letting your kids watch. I, I'm not even gonna say like, that's like a negative. It's, it was just a little surprising that there were some elements included in, in here, mostly with violence that I was like, oh, they're okay. They went a little further than I thought they would, which I'm fine, but I don't have kids, but I totally get it. In your, in your case, we're like, oh, I can't, I can watch Scooby-Doo and Batman with my kids. I can't watch Batman Ninja Turtles with my boys yet. Well, this is where Peter will jump into the YouTube comments, uh, Peter <laughs> yeah. Vera, and tell me that I'm a big prude. And I was watching whatever he always says, you know, The Godfather, Friday the 13th or something when he was four. I watch RoboCop with my mom. Yeah, RoboCop. That's the go-to, right? Um, yeah. Now, when I say, like, that's one of my nits to pick is the sure. violence. Okay. <clears throat> and it's not because I don't like violence i like tons of violent movies you know i I have a reputation for like oh i'm gonna get squeamish if i see blood that's not it tonally some of the violence was really pretty heavy in this compared to where the rest of the movie was sitting so you think about i get that you think about like the first introduction to the turtles it's the smoke and of course it's our heroes so we're not going to see them get ultra violent because they're they're the heroes but it's the smoke pellet and they're knocking people out and even leo's got his swords but no one's getting cut well then it goes from that right to like you know morning star right into the dome yeah. you know foot soldiers dead i think somebody gets decapitated like somebody gets an arm cut off to do the fingerprint scan or something right um like it just there's some aspects where i was but- like oh that's the That's scarecrow an sequence and scarecrow now they're sequence. they're all dead which i i loved it but i right. i understand yeah like you're being a responsible parent yeah here and that's a that's an element too that i can see of like ah, that might be a little too much for my boys yet where they're at so i get and that. that's and fine not every not everything needs to be tailored at my kids yeah. or, or my sure. parenting but it, if i if i kind of had a line graph of like sure um you know violent content even mm-hmm. when there's a lot of martial arts fighting and stuff like that line wouldn't be real high. All of a sudden there's like big blips on this that just sort of stood out. That's, that's one of the, I just kind of, I'm like, huh, interesting choice. I don't know yeah. that I would make that choice, I but you. It, you know, it's not like I'm deducting a full star from the review for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And which I think that's actually kind of cool. in that the, the movie that is also reflective of the art of the original story by Freddie Williams, the second. Because mm-hmm. I think his his art has such a fun mix of it is both fun comic book and looks like a little mature as well. Yeah. But I, I think maybe the movie pushes the violence a little bit more than the book does. Uh, I, again, not a complaint. I just think the movie's a little more violent than the book gets. It does. But I think the tone of the book is darker than the tone of the movie. And that's where it's just a little bit of a rub for me. So crazy. To- the tone of the movie is lighter. The violence is higher. The book Mm -hmm. is sort of like tone is a bit more grim the whole time, but it's not necessarily as graphic. Mm -hmm. Freddie Williams, uh, the second, by the way, one of my favorites, that guy is such a huge talent. Um, Gee, why? Because he did this in another mashup, huh? Yeah. He's the king of like beautiful (laughs) art for things that could be cash grab crossovers, which in this, my other case would be injustice versus masters of the universe. Like this dude, it's like, you know, part, standard part kind of classic comic book art part um like painting and part like chalk art i I always like in my mind somehow it's kind of like chalky it's cartoony without being juvenile i know cartoon like cartooning is difficult work i don't mean to be pejorative but like that that dude i really like his stuff i don't think it works for everything i don't know if i a mainstream monthly by him would like be would hit the same way but yeah. when he shows up in a, in a mini series and he's on it i'm like oh dang it this is we're in for a treat mm-hmm. yeah absolutely and another one to add like currently right now yeah it's coming up towards the end of it but the mini series of mighty Morphin power rangers versus godzilla i so, have not read it i've actually no, heard some I, good things I, i'm waiting for the for the collection on that because i missed like the first two issues and it were really hard to find at my shop so I was like, i'll just wait until the collection and i'll get that but they weren't anyways. filling up the shelves yeah 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 yeah. uh so basically i think in the opening credits of the movie 
uh it even i mean it does which phenomenal like opening credits i think and closing really credits good. we'll get to the closing yeah. credits um it, it does say inspired i think inspired by the story by james tynan the fourth and freddie williams uh and i actually think man they they stick to the book in a lot of like the the core of the story batman and ninja turtles the the original book was just batman slash this does the verses which right. is really funny to me that that happens because there's the one fight, fight. it's one not fight, very long 30 seconds right maybe yeah and in which that sticks to the same with the book the book doesn't have tons of fights between batman and the ninja turtles right. um but the the reasoning the, the core of it is that the turtles are in gotham and shredder is in gotham with the foot clan and they're they're trying to assemble a big device right that's that's like the the through the both stories have that at their base yep instant differences that i noticed are in the movie we do not get the any kind the turtles are just in gotham yeah it's just like these it's just like the turtles were in new york and then they came to gotham Batman's always been in Gotham. He's heard mm-hmm. rumors about some turtles, but he thought yeah. it was made up, right? Like they're in the same universe. They've just never crossed cross paths. And yeah. similarly, um, the League of Shadows and the League of Assassins. Or what? Wait, hang on. Where, what do they use in this one? League of Assassins, right? Yeah. Shadows. Yeah, yeah. Nolan. I couldn't remember. For some reason, I had it. Gets me used, still. Gets yeah. me still. And the Foot Clan have like mm-hmm. been working together they're like they're known entities to one one another in this movie and you know obviously coming from different um you know dimensions in the yeah. book they like had to get to know one another yeah and but there, it, the book goes into a full-on then like why they're here they're trying to get back and then we get right. the whole like expiration dates gotta yeah. zoom along here there isn't one other than the fact of our bad guy is teaming up with your bad guy to do some bad things. We got to stop, stop him. him. Yep, exactly. exactly. <laughs> and you know it, what? If you've works. got, what, 87 minutes or whatever this sucker clocks in at, and you need to trim some story to make it sure. fit in there, and you want to introduce some other stuff, because they introduced um, quite a bit of stuff that I think is right out of the, what, the fourth crossover series that was focused on the animated adaptations. If there, you want to, you know, fit that runtime and introduce some new things that wasn't in that first volume, something's got to get sliced, and it just makes it a little bit cleaner to say, "Hey, go along the ride with us." These, yeah, these just people here. are just from different cities, right? And I they didn't it, meet on Twitter, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Huh? It, it, it works in both cases too. I think I wasn't missing it. It was just definitely in watching and reading. I was trying to take note for our for our discussion here of like the differences, and I'm like, "Oh, right. okay, that's one is that we don't have." um that's subplot that or main plot going going along but i do love they're unaware of each other uh they, they do have a clash albeit brief um and yeah and shredder's doing his shredder thing and with the right people in gotham and it and i really i don't i enjoy all those elements um some of the things that are the same let's see I mean, there was a couple lines that I knew that, that, that one, for instance, of like Dracula costume, what Dracula movies are you watching? That was in the, the book and in the movie. It was when uh, Mikey's doing his big drawing of the, the bat and the pluses and the minuses. Right. That's in both versions. The I think Raph says a Dracula costume in both versions. And Donnie says that like, what Dracula movies are you watching? Um Leo says in both versions, I've never fought someone like him. He wanted to figure us out. Um, that's that part's cool. I love the the fights itself. Um, is pretty similar in both. And Mikey does a crashing into the pizza place, yelling and screaming. And which I love the addition in the movie, though, where somebody, you know, it's just a background uh couple, and and it's like in the one person says, like, we we should see other people and the other one's crying says, but I don't like other people. Like that, and then he that comes crashing. Yeah, yeah, he then comes crashing, crashing right in. there. Um, it's great because he thinks he's going to warn them about the scare and they're like, it's a giant mutant, right? Like yeah. Place. That's great. Yeah. Mikey's it, all unaware. 
then the let's see the discovering of the bat cave is in both the um mikey on the t-rex it's a little different in the movie but it's still mikey's on a t-rex having the time of his life and we Um, we get that in the animated book too ninja mm -hmm. turtles you know kind of goofier in the bat cave in the in the animated inspired crossover makes so much sense right i mean (laughs) who wouldn't be doing Um, wearing the costume ill-fittingly over his head mm -hmm. yeah and the um the arkham asylum where all of the the rogues gallery gets gets a taste of the mutant um the mutagen happens in both just Um, classic ninja turtles right like yeah that's that's like pure playmates uh you know action figure line where they just were always inventing you know whether it was from the comics or for the toy line some different you know animal mutant themed bad guy or you know ally whichever way it was a fun thing to do at the rogues gallery for sure yeah and i like that and the for the most part they i love that they they turned into and i remember this in the book and i was just like oh my god um the like the the animals they mutate into were a reflection of the the characters and i thought that that was great um they kept most of them the same in the movie except bane is an elephant in the book yeah and he is he's like a cheetah something in the movie which i kind of didn't understand an elephant makes a lot more sense yeah um maybe a jaguar you know like south american yeah. jungle type yeah, yeah, yeah i okay in that part i get it um Freeze is a polar bear in both. Mm-hmm. Scarecrow's a crow in both. Of course. Uh, Poison Ivy is a Venus flytrap in the movie. Yeah. Where, as in, she's a praying mantis in the comic. The praying mantis doesn't make sense, really, to me. No. I think the flying, the Venus flytrap. That's just an insect, right? Mm-hmm. A Venus yeah, yeah, flytrap yeah. is at least like a, you know, carnivorous mm-hmm. plant. Yeah. And I'm trying to see. Penguin's not included or penguin doesn't change he doesn't get he doesn't get mutated but he's uh you know they say like he looked more like kind of an owl in the book i know it's intended to be some sort of penguin i'm not a uh ornithologist ryan i don't know (laughs) if you know this about me i'm not sure what what type of yeah i know i've been hiding that yeah i don't know what kind of penguin that was but i remember when i turned that page being like huh that's a weird weird looking penguin penguin. but Uh, it's a mutant so you know Harley was a, a hyena in the movie. Yes. And she's more, I mean, she's more like a dog in the comic. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And then I'm trying to think who else do I have marked down? There was, oh, Two-Face was like two wolves, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, in which I don't think, I try to mark down everybody. I don't think he was in the comic at all. No, and then he... Joker is a, a cobra um, yes. in both, which, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Super that's me. Like Joker. Sp- bit fire and all these things that are kind of like the same is there anything maybe that you found the same in both that you really liked or you can even mention if there's some uh some differences well i think you know the omissions come to mind right away you know we don't get splinter here we don't get lucius yeah. we don't get casey jones um we don't get april and neil uh we do get barbara right so that's where the animated crossover book i think shows up you get barbara yeah. gordon there um how they get into the bat caves a little bit different because of course splinters Which, around the inclusion of barbara i like because we do get the opening sequence from the book in the movie of the turtles basically foiling the foot the the foot clan trying to take you know breaking into the wayne enterprises right except in the book it's a scientist and in the movie it's barbara that's yeah. there and I really like that way of like, well, let's keep it the same, but just swap these two characters and it, right. it totally works. So, and then you get to have like this kind of, um, you know, they don't overdo it, but there's this little bit of cutesy uh, crush on the part of Donatello uh, to, towards Babs. And that's in, redheads, that's, right? They'll get, they get you. you. They'll yeah. get you. Yeah. Um, sorry, what? Um, <laughs> uh, but, you know, that's, that's something they got to include from that, which I thought was cute in the in the animated, you know, uh, crossover book um, that got to show up in the movie. You know, there's some different stuff. We don't get like, um, you know, Batman getting transformed, uh, you know, gets injected with the mutagen as opposed to getting outright killed and having to be saved. So there's a difference. But I thought you got, you know, you got Batman man bat like that's a rad change. That's yeah. that's really cool. So there's a ton of stuff 
that I really thought, you know, really hit the marks pretty consistently where I'm like, oh yeah, no wonder they get, you know, some writer's cred on this thing. Um, but the differences that, that stuck out were probably a little bit more obvious than even, even the similarities were because the movie and the book both do a really good job of when you're watching it, there's, or reading it, there's not a ton of stuff that, that pulls you out where you, um, you get to be like, Oh, what's going on here? I need to track this. Is this the mm -hmm. same? Is it different? So it's only sort of after I watched it where I thought about like, oh yeah, what wasn't there? And then there were some of these things that come to mind. I wasn't even like, as I was watching the movie, keeping a tally and said, after a couple of viewings and you're getting ready to talk about, you're like, oh, okay, what are some interesting points? Well, there's some stuff missing. Oh, and there's some stuff that feels like comes from this other crossover, but those writers, you know, um, uh, Matthew Mike, Manning. Uh, Matthew Manning, yeah, our pal. Uh, and John Somerville and Uncle John, Uncle John, uh, <laughs> Uncle John if you're watching, <laughs> shout out. Um, yeah, crazy Australian, I love you. Um, they they don't get you know it's not enough of that for them to show up yeah. when the credits roll. But there's a little bit of that, and I love it because the movie does a good job. And when I said earlier, it's a bit of a you know mixed bag, and I corrected myself right away. That that that's yeah, the same thing. means something more than what I intend to say. It <clears throat> there's some odd choices and consistency around tone where all of a sudden it goes very it feels very animated series to me ninja turtles in particular where like hey they're goofy and mikey's kind of like super speed here super speed there like kind of wacky and don's got a very oh i forget whatever whatever that nickelodeon run was but you know shape of his head and everything else yeah so you get some of these different elements but that's great that's great because there are so many different iterations of you know each set of these characters that this movie you get a little flavor of each of it I, I would say the one choice that i'm like no matter how often i watch it just doesn't make a ton of sense to me the, the 70s neil adam batman costume sticks out like a sore thumb every time i watch it for some <laughs> reason i don't know okay and it's, it doesn't matter right it doesn't matter yeah. to the story um but i'm just like why did they go with that i don't quite get it because you get very new 52 looking Robin. They don't say it's Damien, but it's pretty clear it's Damien. He calls, you know, father and, um, you know, talk about uh, Jason Todd is mentioned, but not named kind of deal. Yeah. But he's very new 52. And it kind of seems, and then, um, you know, Barbara is, oh, shoot. Can't, Peter's going to make fun of me when he watches it. Uh -huh. well, who's ever run that was where she's in the costume, you know, with the zip and the snaps. Never mind. I'll look it up later. Gail but, Simone. There you go. Um, thanks. Yeah, so, <laughs> and to go all the way back to the seventies, blue and gray, and not something more modern to go along with these other modern, you know, interpretations and a more modern yeah. turtles thing just felt kind of odd, especially okay. with um, as intimidating and dark as Batman is in the beginning of this. Like I'd almost make more sense if like at the end he needed to change costume and lightens it up with the turtles a little bit. Cause in the beginning he's very dark, very brooding, very, Oh, this isn't a family. It's a team. Right. Um, yeah. So just a little bit odd, okay. you know, but it doesn't, it's sure. not, again, I'm not subtracting <laughs> full stars for things like, you know, throwing star to the head. We're about and, to. Yeah, no, I'm not. Yeah. Two Garrett, stars you, out of five. You should have oh, heard Garrett <laughs> on the friggin' Batman book club. What is it? Page to screen. There you go. Yeah. That guy was really talking out of his b-hole. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> nah, it was still, I still really, really like it. There's just a couple little things to this that make that seem a little bit odd. You know, I'm sure a lot of people were really happy that they went with the blue, um, blue and gray and the the undies and the yellow oval. Um I don't know. It doesn't bother me, but if you were to tell me, like, what, what would you choose? I'd go, like, black and gray. Yeah, black and gray. Like, I don't know. i just say black and gray, yellow oval. Keep fine. the yellow oval. Right there. There it is. Yeah. Yellow oval, always. That's fine. I'm sure um, I've got one around here someplace. <laughs> it's somewhere, yeah. Um, I was going to mention, too, what I really liked, the change in the movie, but it even wasn't necessarily a change, it was an addition, is they, they get to the Arkham, and the Arkham sequence seems extended in the movie. Yeah. And I love that. But then I also realized too, like, wait, this is the big finale in the book. And we've still got, and I'm checking, I'm like, we still got like a half hour or 40 minutes right. left this movie. Oh my God, what are they going to do? So I love that you got the Arkham sequence. And it was great, I thought, period. 
and uh um oh my gosh why am i forgetting her uh who voiced uh harley in this i think she did poison ivy as well T- tara strong it's tara, tara strong. Vera's, yeah, uh, it favorites. Is tara. yep um she was great i mean as expected she's always and, great but that sequence I thought was really good. Scarecrow was the highlight for me. I thought that was awesome. But then they did a whole new big finale. They went even bigger at the yes. end, which was totally new and not included in the book. And um, you know, and in in that case, it was I think Batman fought Shredder, the turtles fought Roz. Um, yeah. I thought that was awesome. Um, I, I love... switch room. Let's flip flop baddie guys. Yeah, because I mean we see Roz, no, not in a ton of animated movies. We've seen comics and stuff. We've seen him take it on. The whole point of this is mix mash. Yeah. So, so we saw it and it was, that was good. And I thought they still inject, which is always so key. I think with Ninja Turtles is like injecting humor appropriately. Right. And even that, the funny moments, including Batman, I think were appropriate. And especially Mikey writing shotgun and he like press the buttons. And then he just goes crazy Starts and like, all shit's going off everywhere. And then right. was it was it Donnie that was like, I want to push the button. Or, no, it was or Robin. <laughs> it was it was it, oh, shit, I can't remember now. Damn it. Um, but somebody said like they were bummed that they want to push the buttons. And I didn't, I don't know. I just thought that, I thought that was fun and funny. And then getting like the foot clan that had been tested with the mutagen in the movie, and uh they're coming after them and they take them down and they form back to and so they kind of stick true of they're not you know like the foot clan they're not killing them you get the good explainer shot of like the one foot clan dude comes back to human and he's naked and he's like on all fours he's like right. or something which is still right. kind of funny and it's like and then they go and, and save okay. them that mm-hmm. like they pull like let's get these guys out of here right and they go and they're pulling out the foot clan soldiers as it's everything's about to blow up like they're heroes yeah. right they're heroes it's great i really liked the batman and shredder fights uh yeah. both initially were like oh my gosh like they're really establishing shredder as like he is the ninja master of the world like he is the, he, should be. he is the master martial artist it takes four turtles to try to fight him right so batman going toe to toe and really kind of meeting his match and i can't remember the move but he yeah, summons all the power and bam and you know knocks batman out or whatever and then he, they both kind of have to recover to go and then you get that you know, at the beginning of the movie or towards the beginning of the movie to then bring that full circle where they fight again. And then, you know, cowabunga. And then, you know, like yeah. they, they throws out the code word, right? It was fantastic. And then also sort of the balance of, you know, Shredder does that to Batman, whatever goofy deal. And then at the end, it's Leo who pulls, you know, the sort of like combination hit pressure point thing on Roz yeah. and says, you know, I learned, I learned that from a rat. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. so good. So good. Yeah. And I, I just don't, no offense to Splinter or Casey Jones, both characters that I love, but I didn't miss them. I thought like we needed to see Batman. We need to see the Ninja Turtles and we yeah. got them. And then the extra was Batgirl and Damien Robin. I could have done without because I don't yeah. know what here for, but he had a good dynamic uh, included. It was fine. Uh, lastly, what I want to mention is definitely the end credits. Um, maybe the best end credits out of any Batman movie. They're great. Ever. And so freaking perfect of you pull up any of these covers that they're mocking and you will see how freaking perfect they match everything. I would love to get some posters made from I that, wish that right? they I wish that they'd have they would like, sell uh, like hotcakes, Ryan. That's absolutely. something we say to in get Minnesota. Batman number one behind me. And I think it, mm-hmm. it's Batman and I is either Mikey or Leo. And then there's even uh Detective Comics number 40 of uh, the Robin introduction, but it was um I feel like that was Mikey. Yeah. Uh, but then they did it with yeah. Ninja Turtle issues as well. And I mean the and I'm uh, shame on me of the the Roz cover by Neil Adams where Batman at the sword fight and Roz is walking away and Batman's on the ground I mean yep. they they redid that one I mean so many covers and they're all so freaking cool it's like come they on really, come on really Mondo, need, Mondo yes, this is like yes, your right, territory right in the wheelhouse it, it would people would gobble those things up it, you know I don't always sit and watch all the credits but yeah I know um, me neither but for this one it's like Oh man. And I've seen it how many times, right? Like mm-hmm. just glued. It's really, really rad. And because they also they reward you with those credits, but then also give you a credit scene. 
Yes. A nice tease and hoping that like, this is only three years later. Where's that sequel, baby? Give me that sequel. I have a hard time thinking that this didn't do well. No, it had to do it because it hits, you know, it gets in that sweet spot. They went for the people who have money. Yes. Uh, yep. <laughs> we're the thir- stuff. <laughs> yeah, we're the 30 like 32 to 42 year old yeah. gap type people or you know I, I I'm bad at knowing what the demographics we are. We have maybe jobs it's... now and yeah. we have money. You have jobs, you have money and gosh you'd sure like to buy a chunk of your childhood happiness yeah. back, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And in Batman's always popular and Ninja Turtles are right in that spot. I always say like, you know, I do some toy collecting and I always say like if you can find what was hot like what were five-year-olds into 30 years ago and buy that, that's a good investment. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Almost, it's really hard to go wrong. You know? Uh, Garrett, uh, before we go, is there anything that you want to mention that we hadn't touched on yet that you really liked or uh, yeah, let's go with like really liked that we haven't mentioned yet. Cause I think we talked uh, about the quote unquote negatives. Garrett brought yeah, the negatives. Yeah. I mean, very few, right? These are, these are minor nits. I just cannot help myself from picking away. Um, I thought I actually really liked Baxter, the fly in this. Um, yeah. I've, I've always liked Baxter. Me too. I liked Baxter way back in the eighties Ninja Turtle series. I thought he was, you know, kind of fun sniveling. I thought the character design was good. Um, I, I'm going to go with little things that I liked. The other little thing that I, things that I really liked is that uh turtles they had their initials uh you know involved in their belt somehow it wasn't just like you know the action figures used to be where it was a circle you know with their letter in Mm -hmm. it it was like okay the leather in the belt you know kind of crisscross and made an m or you know it's just sort of like an l i think rafts is like kind of looks like a lowercase r like there's really cool details in this um and that makes all the difference. You can tell the people that worked on it were like, you know, even from Fair there's fans. a yeah, there's a scene where uh, our four buddies are coming out of the um, the a manhole and mm-hmm. all their heads are sticking out together, and it's essentially the poster for the 1990 movie, right? Like, yes, there is a lot of stuff that shows up, and you're like, I know where that reference material came from. I know what reference material that's looking at. And like these guys get it, and, <laughs> and it's. Sometimes that is sort of these things. I was talking about this with somebody um, not too recent or not too long ago. The cynic looks at me like, oh, fan service. You're just trying to like buy me off by referencing something like, no, no, give it to me. Especially with a, <laughs> especially with a project yeah. like this. Shower me with the fan service. I'm fine with it. Yep. Fine. This is Batman crossing over with Ninja Turtles. What is this if not like purified, yeah. condensed fan service? And it's your fan service and it's delicious. Yep uh rapid fire quick for me i uh shout out troy baker who did yeah, batman and duty. joker voices here um that guy is awesome and i love just like little lines and ones that always make me light up definitely when mikey says to donatello you do machines i'm the party dude oh yeah that was another one that's another one Instant, right? and i'm like oh my god it's from the original song yeah i thought <laughs> of uh you know the um leonardo dicaprio uh gif or, or meme from once upon a ah. time in Hollywood. Ah, ah. <laughs> yeah. You did the yeah, thing. Me. All by myself. And yeah. Mira's just like watching me. She's just like, what are you doing? Like, what are like you, you doing? Know, it's, it's true. You get it. You get it. Here. Nerdy fiance. Um, all right. Well, let's put a bow on it, Garrett. Sure. Okay. okay. That's not out. That's not out. Stare. Welcome. Batman versus TMNT. Like it did what it did in a, a good amount of time. And then was like, we're out. And I think that's Done. what we should do. Respect yeah. the heroes. Be like your so, heroes. Um, yeah, why don't you plug away? Uh, you know, I'm getting yeah. out of here quickly, which is challenging because I'm a chatty guy. I sure We're do both like chatty, to talk. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, anybody who wants to keep conversations going, the easiest way to do that with me is over at Twitter. I am on there more than I probably should be. You can find <laughs> me, <laughs> my handle's at Garrett Wado. That's at G A R R E T W A T O. If you like to hear me talk about Batman and assorted other topics, you can uh, catch me over at the Batman on Film podcast. I, I host that. We've got a uh, episode coming up. We're celebrating the 200th episode in whatever volume of the, of the Batman <laughs> on Film podcast we're doing now, like volume three, maybe volume four. Ah, no, sure. we'll figure, I think it's episode three. 200. Yeah, it's episode 200. You know, it's the there bicentennial. You know. yeah. um, 
there's a bunch of 89 references to be made. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, with new episode, we're recording that uh, this weekend. It should post next week. Uh, so Woo-hoo! first week of August for those of you, you know, not, not listening when this first gets posted. And other than that, you know, check out, I've got some film reviews and comic book reviews over at batmanonfilm.com. I think that covers it. And then you can there catch you me on some episodes of Ryan's podcast because he's nice enough to have me on. You're so one of the him. one of the top guests. You're on this quite a bit. Nobody beats Peter Arvera. I know. Um, that guy, he won't, he won't leave. He wiggled but, his um, way okay. in. I think <laughs> I think these monthly shows are cheats, you know. At oh, least yeah? that's what I'm telling myself. Okay. If all I right. if I subtract all his monthly shows and just go toe to toe on be stories, a little close. Yeah, be a little I, close. I think he still might be ahead, but, but he's be closer. Ahead quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you, sir, for coming on and doing this. And yeah, follow, I mean, all the information's in the, like it, below in the description where you can follow Batman Book Club for upcoming episodes and new episode drops. Also pay attention to the YouTube channel where uh, that guy Pete and I are also doing um, a Road to No Man's Land, checking out that that big um, event in the comics. We've got two down and a bunch more are on the way. So yeah, just keep following following the feed here and uh yeah there will be more of these from page to screen as well as hopefully some other stuff uh coming soon so um yeah so that's that's all i got so um uh, for garrett i'm ryan and uh until next time uh cowabunga, cowabunga.